What is the best sounding engine of all time? Well, here to sort it out is two-time Oscar-winning sound designer, Mark Mangini. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> My job is to be responsible for and create everything that you hear in a film, except for the music, and that's quite a lot. We're going to play him the sounds of legendary engines, and he is going to rank them. Let's hear that first engine. I know what this is. <laughs> there were two samples there. One, yeah. the first sounded like the chainsaw. I'm not gonna give that a very high score. No? Um, no, it felt slight and ineffectual. We could put it down here where the audience couldn't see it. Let's put it down here below table level. Oh my God, starting out very strongly opinionated. <laughs> All right. The moment is oh, at the end. I was wrong. I didn't know what that was. I think you're gonna be proven stupid again. No, not proven stupid. All right, that was a four GT 350. A lot of people say this is what? one of the better sounding motors to come out. Most American V8s use a cross plane crankshaft, which features a 90 degree angle between crank throws. It looks like a plus sign. But this 5.2 liter V8 called the Voodoo uses a flat plane <laughs> crank featuring 180 <laughs> degrees of angle between throws, and that looks like a flat, straight line. In a movie, this would be the Ford ineffectual focus. Next clip. That is a V8. Mm. The first, the, the burble, I mm -hmm. know you love burble like I, I love burble. I burble, burble, yeah. burble. I'm always gonna lean towards burble because I like the weight. In cinema, one of the things we do to create impact is to add subwoofer to things, those low bass frequencies, and that makes people feel it. Often it's a visceral effect, mm -hmm. not just an oral one. Yeah, so like if you fire up this engine versus like the first engine in a scene or a movie, it's like a much more dramatic occasion. Exactly. Right, it feels like something that can get the job done. Unlike the previous car. Shelby didn't have anything to do with this engine, but he did have a lot to do with this one. Oh, one of my favorite, yeah. Le Mans. Yeah. Oh my God. We talked about cross plane cranks earlier and the Ford GT40 has a big one. Unlike with a flat plane crank, the cross plane firing order causes cylinders on the same bank to fire in succession instead of alternating. This causes an exhaust overlap that produces that deeper, rowdier burb. This is one of the coolest cars with one of the coolest <sighs> stories ever. It's a car that has made a good movie. Yeah, it deserves to be above. The For sure. I mean, I'm out. I'm thinking this one's gonna be. You giving some room? Are you yeah. gonna put some, some I think there's gonna be some guys between this. This guy's gonna live up here. Okay. Someone is probably gonna beat him, but he's gonna live up Don't here. put it all the way up there. No, 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 no. We got a lot of engines to go. Next clip. Some impressive shifting. It's like ring, ring, ring. It reminded me of like a banshee because this was in the upper registers, like uh -huh. an alto or a soprano. Well, where would you rank it amongst these? Well, I'll take just below or just above. I would say let's do just below. And I agree with. It. After seeing the car, I'm good with it too. It's a Porsche GT3 I knew it. RS. I it's got that flat six. And that's why it was like yeah, really kind of like raspy down low, but then right. once we hit it. It's <laughs> When you build a flat six, like the four liter engine inside of this Porsche GT3 RS, the cylinders are laying down flat and opposed to one another. And the firing order produces a balance, rhythmic note. What's especially interesting about Porsche is that they tune their vehicles in a sound lab using acoustic cameras and hire automotive sound engineers. Porsche saw the value in mm -hmm. sound as part of the emotional experience of owning a vehicle. Uh -huh. And uh, right on, Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> Would 
this one you do hear like obviously the exhaust, but you also hear a lot of the intake noise, yeah. you know, but in a different that. way than the GT350. Like yeah. in between shifts, you can hear the engine breathing. So it's like, ah, <gasps> ah, <laughs> and it's like my favorite. The exhaust note felt very trumpety to me, mm -hmm. almost musical. It had, it was almost tuned. All right, so based on the sound, what are the emotions that a sound designer would associate with this sound? Precision and reliable. There's mm -hmm. something about the fluidity of that acceleration curve mm -hmm. that felt like the machining of this is to very high tolerances yeah. and it is like it is never going to fail. So that's that's a good characteristic of a, of a, of a protagonist or a hero. Yeah. You, you can count on them because they will not fail. Yeah, you can always hear the mechanics of it like ah. working together. Yeah, like in it's really harmony. refined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's definitely below our, our two. I'm going to make more room. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this car was the hero in uh, one of the most popular anime series uh, for car enthusiasts. I am, of course, talking about the Toyota AE86 with the 4AGE four-cylinder engine. What? The star of Initial D. So we said we put it here. Yeah, 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 we're in agreement there. I mean, this is... Uh, and that's a four? Four-cylinder. Finally machined, as yeah. I said. No surprise, Yamaha. Known for sound Known equipment for and sound. musical instruments. Mm -hmm. Was behind the design of the engine's cylinder head, which has a cross-flow design, meaning that the intake and exhaust ports are located on opposite sides of the head. This improves airflow, which is why the induction sound from this engine is so pronounced. What's the lesson we're learning here? Sound is important and can make a car even more attractive. It's like it, it gives off the sense of being like an underdog. Is that because we know somehow it's only four cylinders? Yeah. It's trying harder than yeah. everybody it's else. Who doesn't love the underdog? Yeah, it's Luke Skywalker <laughs> in the engine. Next sound. A lot of wind. Yeah. I'm deeply underwhelmed. For some reason, I'm stuck on that sort of blappy kind of misfiring mm -hmm. of the engine. To me, it sounds, from a dramatic standpoint, like something that's broken or can't be relied upon. There's, it's just not in good shape, and we better not count on this individual. Where would you rank it up here? Uh, definitely below. I, below. I didn't think it could happen, but I think we're below the, the GT350. Our first five-cylinder motor. There it which is. Which is probably why we couldn't really place it. Anywhere. Odd numbers. Yeah. yeah. The engine right here is the 07K. This is the Audi RS3, and it uses a five-cylinder motor. Straight fives are smoother and more powerful than four cylinders, but shorter than inline six engines. They sound pretty neat because of the odd number of cylinders, and the engine fires every 72 degrees of the crankshaft, and the exhaust pulses overlap each other, creating a very signature raspy sound. Yeah, very weird engine, kind of mm. an oddball one. Mm. But these things can make like over a thousand horsepower. Props to whoever recorded it, <laughs> yeah. because they got the mic right up by the exhaust. We got lots of throatiness uh -huh. on that idle and those early revs. You know, there's something interesting in the in the flyby. The car quickly disappears upon reaching the microphone, oh, and the reason for that, <laughs> it's also part of the miking technique. Part of the fun of recording passbys is there's two schools of thought on it. One is, if the vehicle is coming towards the microphone, you don't pan with the vehicle. What that gives you is a very dramatic mm. is as soon as it passes the microphone, the sound disappears very quickly. The other possibility is that you pan with the vehicle and you get them oh. off into the distance. Next engine. That's definitely a thick. Yep. 
Yeah, you can hear the gaps. Yeah, yeah. yeah it sounds like a can full of rocks. Like, oh. <laughs> what character would this? This would be a bad guy. Is that engine just going to stop unpredictably? And yeah. that's you know that's the best part of a bad guy is when they're unpredictable. Yeah, it's either a bad guy or like a Han Solo or a Hangman in a Top Gun. Sure. Where it's like, oh, you know what? I don't know about this guy, but then like comes they in get, at, the end at the right time. Yeah, yeah just swoops in. Oh, savior. Yeah, yeah, the cavalry just arrived. Mm -hmm. All right, where would we put it on here? I think it's better uh, than these. Above, because it, it had some some passion. I think it's uh, one of the best sounding engines of all time, and it's kind of a cool, fun one. Also from Germany in the house of Volkswagen. This is oh. a 3.2 liter VR6. It's a narrow angle V6. It's shorter than an inline six, narrower than a V. VW did this by staggering the cylinder banks and using only a 15 degree angle between them. It can use a single cylinder head where most V6s are closer to 60 degrees and have to have two heads. It's like this, so that. Uh, the packaging of the engine means that the intake and exhaust runners have different lengths between the cylinders, plus the firing order is different than a typical V6. The result is the famous Wookiee sound. People call these Wookiees. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, like Han Solo. Like a Han Solo. But it was Chewbacca. Read right into it. Beautifully done. Next engine. I smell a winner. Yeah, that one's spicy. I smell a winner. Loved that one. <laughs> I know where it's going, but I can't wait to see what it yeah. is. It's a purpose-built race car, probably. It's yeah. Because sure, it, it sounds like it's on a track. I think so, yeah. And it sounds F1-ish. Uh-huh. Like it needs one of those starter motor things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then you immediately yeah. sense power and mystery and mm -hmm. potential. Yeah. This engine can perform miracles. Right. All you have to do is coax it into it. It is capable of anything. So it's not what we thought it was. It's not F1? It's, no. This is the Pagani Zonda R. R stands for really sounding good. It's got a naturally aspirated six liter V12 sourced from a Mercedes CLK GTR. A V12's layout causes a very unique sound. All right, you got two six cylinder banks and each of those banks have very evenly distributed firing order, resulting in a smooth sound with evenly timed exhaust pulses. Having more cylinders creates a higher dominant frequency because the engine is firing more times with every rotation of the crankshaft. These factors produce the harmonic high pitch sound that shoots out of the signature four center mounted exhaust pipes. Harmonics is a, is a layering. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a fundamental frequency, which is probably the deep note, but on top of that are all these other frequencies adding to create a polyphony that sounds more symphonic, perhaps. It sounds like a violin. Ooh, yeah, it's pure in yeah. that sense. Mm -hmm. Sinusoidal, almost. Sinusoidal. That's Look that one, <laughs> that one up. That one up. Next engine. <laughs> this is like Mr. Magoo's car. <laughs> and then it, it turned into superhero it, dude. Yeah, like you were talking about the flyby, like this is just like, we heard a couple of sexy passbys. Nice. That's all we got. And mm -hmm. maybe that's all there is to this car. I would put it above these two cats. I'm taking points off because I think it's the loudmouth in the class. Okay. It, it speaks more than there is substance. This is actually not a very good race car, so you are absolutely on point. This is the Mazda 787B. What? It is a super legendary car. It's a rotary that won at Le Mans, but 
There's a lot more to the story because of like regulations and just the time and like the year that it happened. Like most people couldn't race uh, their car. It was loud and it did win, but not great race car. Kill me in the comments. The 787B was the only Japanese car to ever win Le Mans. It did that thanks to the R26B four rotor engine, meaning instead of using any cylinders at all, it has four triangular-ish shaped rotors spinning around an eccentric shaft. Since there aren't any pistons in a rotary engine, there's no reciprocating mass, so these engines can rev extremely high, in this case, up to 9,000 RPM. But there's more to the sound than just RPMs. That brap, brap, brap sound happens in rotary engines because of overlap between the intake and exhaust ports. Don't drive it on the street, only drive it on the track in France. <laughs> Next oh. clip. Oh, I loved that. The first word that came to my head was operatic. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Do you think this is an Italian opera, a German opera, or an wow. English opera? I'm gonna say Italian. Where would you put it? Maybe here. I sure Mark, hope it's Italian. You finally got your Ferrari. Ah! You got to take a victory lap. <laughs> can we re re talk? Can we rethink this? Green, 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 I gotta point out, it is behind the Shelby, just like in 1960. Oh, you dog. <laughs> You've heard this car before because the last time you were in one of our videos, you declared it to be the best sounding V8 of all time. I did, I did. One of the reasons that is is because it's flat plane crank V8, which revs to 9,000 RPMs to produce an iconic high pitch Ferrari scream. It's not just the crank that influences the sound of this car, Mark. Tell me. They <laughs> cared about the experience and they gave it a highly tuned exhaust system to achieve the perfect exhaust tones. And I say tones. Mm. Ferrari made sure to emphasize certain ones to create a chord from the exhaust. And at red line, it's like hearing an orchestra of notes from the left side, then the right side, 75 times a second. <laughs> Part of the secret to operatic singing, and, and actually in, in any reproduction of music, is what we call vibrato. Yeah. The varying of a note, because if you just hold a note, ah, it's pretty boring. Mm -hmm. But if it's ah, if you interrupt and mm -hmm. create vibration, like mm -hmm. 75 times a second, you create uh, interest. We have one <laughs> more car left. This car is powered by a naturally aspirated 4.8 liter V10 that was built with acoustics in mind from start to finish. And a lot of you guys think that it is the best sounding engine ever made. <laughs> we'll see. Ooh. Is so beautiful. I, I, it's gonna be, it's, I'm, I'm debating where to put it first or second. I'll tell you that right off the bat. Well, hopefully Lexus will make a sequel because no, we just heard the no Lexus way. LFA. Yeah. No way. Mm -hmm. Almost everything in this engine is acoustically tuned from the surge tank to the ribbed engine walls. This means that when different components in the car vibrate, they all vibrate in 
harmony, producing a uniform sound, not unlike a violin. Wow, yeah. wow, I'm getting goosebumps because yeah. I didn't expect it. Yeah. But in a way, I, it kind of makes, it fits because Lexus is their premier mm -hmm. branding and everything about it should be attention to detail right. and refinement and mm -hmm. the highest technology available. Yeah. One of the beautiful things that they did, like we do in cinema, we're constantly tweaking hundreds of channels of sound, much like in this vehicle, there's hundreds of conduits and resonant spaces that could create sound, and they attended to every one of them so that there was harmony. Mark, thank you so much for coming in and being oh, in another video. Enjoy. It's always a pleasure. You're really smart. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more experts react to everything in the car world, make sure you subscribe. Follow me on social media at James Palmer. Follow Mark. MarkMangini.com. This weekend, instead of going to see a movie, go hear a movie. I love you.